The Suzuki Ignis name has returned to Australian roads for the first time since 2005. This new model is officially classed as a compact SUV, but it's probably best to think of it as a high-riding city car. So let's check it out. Fashionable styling helps to sell cars at any point in the pricing spectrum. And there's no doubt this Suzuki will stand out on city streets with its charmingly funky exterior. You can have a contrasting black roof if you opt for white or red body colour, and more mini-style personalisation is possible both inside and out. Dealer-fitted packs can add splashes of red, orange and blue trim for the headlight, grill and fog light surrounds. Wheels and side mirrors can be customised, and the cabin's black and white dash can be offset with red, orange, blue or titanium inserts for the door handles, vent surrounds and centre console. The 3.7 metre long Ignis is smaller than class rivals such as the Honda HRV and Mazda CX-3, making it easy to park even though its steering is on the slow side. It's also priced notably lower, costing the same as the last Ignis offered more than 10 years ago, but that doesn't mean scrimping on standard equipment. Satellite navigation is a surprising inclusion on the base model, with a 7-inch colour display, rear camera, cruise control, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration, all featuring on the GL and GLX trim grades as standard. The Ignis lives up to its SUV billing, with seating that's higher than found in Suzuki's other hatchbacks, the Swift and the Bellino. Cabin plastics are a bit unsophisticated, but the design does a good job of extending the exterior's youthfulness. And elements like this modern infotainment screen are a smart touch, and the interface works well. Despite its small dimensions, there's good space inside the Ignis. Two adults will find enough headroom and legroom in the rear seats, which vary depending on variant. The base GL features five seats in total and a 60-40 split rear bench, whereas the higher spec GLX is just a four-seater, but the rear bench slides backwards and forwards and has a 50-50 split seat back. The GLX's setup gives it a slightly larger and more flexible boot, though the Ignis generally has less luggage space than its bigger competitors. Cabin storage could also be more generous. Both Ignis variants use a 1.2-litre four-cylinder engine that's up to the task, though it's better suited to frugal fuel consumption than zippy performance. A manual gearbox is available only on the entry-level GL, with a selection of a CVT Auto available for less than the average cost of an automatic transmission option. The CVT gearbox is relatively quiet, though it doesn't provide the smoothest or sharpest acceleration. The auto-only GLX model introduces features including daytime running lights, keyless entry and start, and 16-inch alloy wheels rather than the 15-inch steel wheels fitted to the GL. The bigger wheels do look better, but they introduce a firmer ride. We'd buy the Ignis GL. It hits the sweet spot of cost versus equipment by including all of the must-have features and offering the choice of a manual gearbox if you want it, which does make the Ignis better to drive. The Ignis isn't the perfect city car, but it's easy to appreciate and enjoy its fun approach to design, as well as internal space and standard features that surprise, considering the model's size and price. <laughs>